Welcome everyone to another episode of Tyler's Weekly Rundown, your favorite award show recapping the week that was week five in Borger Cafe. I would just like to get out ahead of this. Fuck the Philadelphia Eagles. It's Red October, baby. The only team I care about is the Birds of War. More on that later. Alright, let's get it started. Our Woo Award this week goes to none other than Linguini with Muscles, dropping a huge 162.82 points. Wild. Next up, our Oof goes to the Kamish, Red Zone Ronane, 93.8. Not gonna cut it. Next up, you got Robbed. It's gonna go to Ayahuasca Healing. Dropping 121.34, a respectable week, and still getting beat. Our laugher of the week, Linguini with Muscles over Red Zone Ronade, our woo and oof in one matchup. 69.12 is the deficit there. Almost 70 points. Insane. And our nail biter of the week was Wayne's Fantasy Football Team over Wizards of Loneliness by only 4.8 tight one there folks all right some bonus stats for the week really starting to figure out what burger cafe is this year um we have two <coughs> undefeated teams the gasps in pickle east and the new york football gordons in cheese south and both have the point totals to back it up. I believe they're both in the top four of points four this year. Um, another bonus stat. Mr. Ronain, Mr. Red Zone Ronain. In the two weeks since the near 200 point game, Mr. Kamish is 0-2 while averaging just 105.39 points. Is it a flash in the pan? Or can we see the man rebound? We'll see. And finally, let's get to the elephant in the room. Birds of war. Looking like the birds of whack this year. We're 0 and 4 and have scored 350 points on the year. No other team has less than 417 points. Um, I took a big swing with keeping Jalen Waddle. I was a big fan of the talent. I thought this was going to be the year that he truly broke out. He's averaging a cool 7.65 points for me this year. <sighs> Might not be the year. Do you know we persevere? It's gonna be okay. Oh, I'm also the only winless team. I guess I'll just go fuck myself. Last up, the matchup of the week. I'm gonna go with Red Zone Ronane versus Ayahuasca Healing. Two teams that have sort of over overperformed, underperformed. They're both 2-2, two and two, with a lot of points for. So, both of them are in the top 5 in points for, and one of them is going to be 2-3 and three to start the year following this week. It's not a place you want to be this early. So, we'll see. It's going to be a tight one. Alright, that's all I got for you this week. Um, go Phil's. Fuck the mats. Fuck the mats. Fuck the mats. Alright, see you next week. up everyone uh commissioner ronane back at it over here this week our guest here in our assistant commissioner Corey every he's gonna be joining us today talking about some new administrative uh initiatives that we've been tinkering with 
and uh, you know a final solution and a period on the end of this punishment saga that's been going on. So some housekeeping, be discussing that, and uh, also just the state of uh, play and the state of the union and in, in Borger in general. I'm checking in with um, you know uh, both divisions, cheese and pickles, see who's riding high and falling behind. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Corey Every, Mr. Assistant Commission, how are you doing this evening? Uh, Co-commissioner Patrick, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> big fan of the show. Uh, big fan, bigger fan of the league. Happy to be here. Right on, man. Right on. Let me ask you. I'm gonna get right to it, okay? Cheese South, New York Football Gordons, four and zero. Real deal? You know, it's hard to uh, to get to four and zero based on pure luck. But I think the football Gordons pulled it off. Pure luck, 4-0. Man, he does have some top-tier talent over there. But uh, look, you know, he's having success early, and uh, you can't sneeze at that. On the other side of the spectrum over there, boom. Bottom of Cheese South, we got Birds of War. Birds of War just, I mean, I don't know, I don't know if he was drunk last week talking about a fire sale, but we're in week four. So it was kind of stunning. And uh, now we see, you know, he's sitting at the bottom of the division and it's a little bit tough for him, but you know, does he have what it takes to kind of get the engine moving? He's got some dinged up players, man. I wake up every morning thankful that the Birds of War is not my team. It's, that's a tough look over there. But look, if we move across town and we're talking straight pickle, we're in a real battle and pickle over here for these top three spots. It looks like gasps over here. The other undefeated team, 4-0. Um, Ryan pretty high, you know, really took it to RZR a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I, I would I would bet that he had his season high that week. But look, in the two-hole over there, WFFT, hard-earned spot, you know, get to 3-1 uh, and one without some talent over there too. But there are some point differentials. Look, the, last year's... Uh, you know, champ teams. We just said Birds of War last place over there in Chi South. So a lot of different looks we're getting this year. Landed a very different way from what we're seeing early on here. What do you think's up with that? I think in general, the NFL season's kind of gotten off to an unexpected start. I think players that were projected to be you know, top dogs. I think Patrick Mahomes, he stumbled out the gate. Uh, someone like sure-handed, you could really kind of count on him week in, week out, like Brandon Ayuk. He's really struggled. Garrett Wilson, first round caliber player. He struggled. Um, I, Sam Laporta, Mark Andrews, you know, a lot of people that were drafted early that a lot of people really count on have not being showing up and i think that's been kind of throwing fantasy football for a loop a little bit i think some of the players um some of the teams that weren't expected to do as well with those ai projections they're doing better because the players who are expected to do so well weren't and maybe some unexpected guys are have a nice season so far um you know i think i think it's a little topsy-turvy it's been four weeks, not a, not a huge sample size, but not a small sample size either. I think, um, you know, it's it's been a weird one so far. Yeah, there for sure it has. And, you know, to that point too, we're, we're seeing receivers, uh, you know, like Tyreek Hill just not have the opportunity on the back end of Tua. We're seeing, uh, we're seeing stars. Yeah, well, Tyreek Hill's supposed to be among the best two or three receivers in the league. Waddle's supposed to be a top option. A chance supposed to be a top option. And, you really, know, Miami. I mean, you know, obviously, I mean, just sounds Miami is hurting bad. You know, Tua goes down and the team dies. You know, we have any? Do we have any look insights into when he's returning? I haven't been following closely the the past day or so, but any any updates on his timeline? So the last two things I heard about Tua specifically are a little contradictory and kind of strange. First. Apparently, he's symptom-free with his concussions. That's good. But he, there was something weird with scheduling where he couldn't find the time to meet with a concussion specialist, which is a little crazy. Um, I might not have the phrasing of that exactly, but uh, 
Yeah. Adam Schefter said, you know, due to schedule, and he hasn't had a chance to see him yet, which, you know, <laughs> is that a tea leave situation where he's not prioritizing seeing a specialist because he's not trying to rush back to football. If that's the case, I don't know. Yeah, then we may be looking at a, a really down season over there in South Florida. Not having a backup, you know, I keep on going back to that sometimes. In a league like where this happens so often, um, he was a guy specifically who needs to have a backup. He's no stranger to a yeah. injury of this kind specifically. Not having, you know, a reliable backup. Like, Joe Flacco was available. Ryan Tannehill still is available. Like, there's yeah. guys they could have had. I can't, yeah, I can't even believe that that uh, Joe Flacco's name is still in the mix after all these years. But, yeah, these are proven guns, and you got to just have a decent guy ready to roll out. Maybe you don't end up in a Tommy Cutlet situation and then your whole season becomes a gag or whatever it is. Also, you know, Daniel Jones, too. That's a whole other case. But uh, I like Malik Neighbors this year, I'll tell you that. I like Malik Neighbors a lot. Daniel Jones, no one's going to talk about him in uh, the great quarterback conversation. But what's really interesting from a fantasy perspective, yeah, uh, Malik Neighbors, I think he has more targets than any receiver in the whole league. Yeah. Which is, you know... How valuable is that? But this is a little interesting. The Giants, they have another option, Wandell Robinson. He's also, like, top five. Like, Daniel Jones, he's slinging it. So he may not have the highest quality of performances, but, you know, opportunity is key. Wandell Robinson, he sure as heck is outperforming Tyreek Hill right now. So, you know, it's top yeah. out there. Corey, man, it's been a lot of fun hanging out and talking today. Uh, before I let you go, I do want to ask you about this week's matchup, I have had it circled in my uh, commissioner office, and I have it written down as the Bozo Bowl, of course. You know, this is a big rivalry game. Um, you know, this is a big matchup. Uh, I can't lie to you about that. Him and I recently, there was a moment where there was a, a you know, kind of like a big league-shaking kind of trade that might have taken place. It ended up falling through. Um, now, you know, a week or two removed, we got the Bozo Bowl, and this thing, it's being billed as, like, prize fighters, you know, heavyweight champions going for the belt, but I don't see it that way. To me, in this, in this fight, there's only going to be two hits. There's going to be me hitting him, and Kid Rock's Ba with the Ba playing in the background. It's be a hell, <gasps> hell of a match, the Bozo Bowl. Everyone, you heard it here. We got Corey making Kid Rock references. We got Deej on the warpath. Who knows what's going to happen? Dude, man, you know, every week I go into- Patrick, Patrick, I got to stop you right there. We got breaking news. Just in. Headline, Taints lose faith in Josh Allen trying to pivot to Trevor Lawrence. I kid you not. Apparently the Taints, they're out on Josh Allen. They're trying to pivot to Linguini with muscles face of the franchise, Trevor Lawrence, Linguini will not let him go in a package that does not include Najee Harris. We're getting close to a trade there, but things are... We got a quarterback controversy with the Taints, no question. Wow. Um, wow, I'm completely thrown off track. That's big news. That's the defending champ right there, and we're talking about the defending champ's quarterback, so... Yeah. It's, um... That's big stuff, man. I'm not going to lie. Um, Another big rumor going around right now, Wayne's fantasy football team famously drafted two quarterbacks when they only should have drafted one. Apparently, they're trying to move them both. They're going zero QB approach from hence forward. No quarterbacks for no quarterbacks. WFFT. WFFT is out on quarterbacks. They have it, folks. I mean, the new trade stuff this season... Uh, you know, trade segment, I should say, for Border Brief, out of control. I think uh, as we come in now to October, I think we're going to start getting more and more of these briefs and uh, really appreciate you keeping your ear to the streets. And when uh, our new mystery uh, segment um, supervisor uh, and on air personality uh, makes his debut in the oncoming weeks, um, you know, all of us here at BNN are just really excited. So thanks for holding it down. Patrick, you said it. This trade stuff, it's too much for me to stay on top of. This stuff, it's crazy. I'm burning the candle at both ends. I can't do it anymore. Like you just teased, it is confirmed. 
Borger has hired a official trade correspondent who is going to be handling all trade rumors, all hot stove inquiries, anything trade related is going to be handled by one person who will be announced soon. Assistant Commissioner Corey over here, who's going to break it down and give everybody the league an update on the new punishment. Co-Commissioner Patrick, thank you. So what we've decided for the punishment of this year is there will be a wheel of punishments that will be spun the day the final bracket is determined and the league loser is decided. We're gonna spin the punishment. It's gonna have five different punishments, whatever it lands on, that's what you have to do. And the punishment has to be completed by the Super Bowl. There will be a penalty. If it is not completed by the Super Bowl, you will be penalized in keeper and draft position. You will only be allowed to keep one keeper and your first three picks in next year's draft will be auto-drafted if your punishment is not completed by the Super Bowl. Wow, so just to confirm, if not completed by the Super Bowl, your first three draft picks, auto pick. Your keepers go from max three to max one. Max one. So now, those sound like some pro consequences to me. All right, so we spoke about the wheel. Now we gotta hear about the wheel's choices, of course. Uh, pretty important. So, uh, yeah, you gotta let us know. Number one, what do we got? There will be five choices that will be spun, and it'll be one of first option. You have to recreate the Darren Waller music video, visuals, and vocals. You have to write or perform a five minute set for a comedy open mic. Number two, comedy open mic. Love it. Third. Like three, nose to toes body shaving. Nose to toes. No, you don't have to shave your hair. You know, we'll keep it professional. Chest, arms, legs, everything. You got to go full shave if that's what the wheel lands on. All right. That's, that's That seems okay. Number four. Hold and record your own combine. You got to do it all. 40 yard dash, bench press, the jump thing, whole thing. You got to record it and you have to post it. And then we got to see, we got to rate you, see how, see what kind of athletes we got in here. Wow. So, okay. Post, uh, well, compete in post uh, and rec or record and post your own combine. That's the 40 yard dash, that's the push ups, and that's the jump thing. That's what we know, right? It's that plus more. <laughs> that plus more, okay. I like the combine thing, that's fun. All right, so that brings us to our last thing. What's the fifth one? Number five, day in a donut shop. You're there for 12 hours, but for every donut you eat, knocks an hour off the time. So 12 hour shift at the donut shop. If you eat three donuts, you can leave after nine. You eat nine donuts, you can leave after three hours. So also, this one has to be uh, Instagram Live the whole time. We got to oh, see all the things. Okay, I got you. So, Borger, uh, Borger Live Instagram, the the um, league account, official account. You got to go live from a donut shop. So theoretically, if you showed up, ate a dozen donuts, you could just leave. Easier said than done. <laughs> all right. So those are it. We got some good, good punishments over there. That's a wheel. So to recap everybody, we had Darren Waller. Darren Waller recreate the Darren Waller uh, music video. And that was in choreography and uh, lyrics. Number two, we had book five minutes at your local comedy club for an open mic. Number three, nose to uh, toe, shaving everything. Video proof of it, photo proof of it, nose to toes. Number four, we had uh, the at-home combine. So the at-home combine consists of jumpy thing, 40-yard dash, for sure. Those are at least two things involved in it. And of course now, the last one we just recapped, the donut shop. 
stay in a donut shop 12 hours for every hour that you are scheduled to be there one comes off when you eat a donut so that's where we're at um wow that's a really exciting and important fun update because now we could rest easy uh i like these punishments and i think we should uh keep them intact and spin a wheel of course um when the time comes last day of the season uh to spin the wheel um we'll do a live broadcast from bnn and uh we'll see how it plays out but look thanks a lot for helping us out today with these uh new rule changes this really exciting stuff um so listen Corey, thanks so much again for stopping by and we'll see you next time bud thanks for having me